Welcome to the second of five in a series discussing circular economies within a supply chain. And today we are going to discuss collaborative networks. These networks or these collaborative networks, they are, uh, I guess you could say, an efficient way of sharing and distributing resources collaboratively. Uh, they could be individuals, they could be groups, they could be organizations that uh, help to enhance the efficient utilization of our resources and ideally reduce waste. These um, networks also, they enable both individuals and organizations to pool their resources for a specific purpose, reducing the cost as well. A sharing economy is an example that shows us or gives an example of a collaborative network. Things like, uh, or companies rather, like Airbnb, Uber, and Lyft. Right, they're good examples of businesses that use collaborative networks to facilitate the sharing of resources. So in Uber, for example, you're sharing a car and the petrol that goes into that car, but you split it among however many travelers there will be. Uh, these companies, they've created platforms uh, on mobile apps, for example, that enable people to share that resource, uh, such as a home in the case of Airbnb or a car in the case of Lyft and Uber. If we think about Airbnb, people can rent out their homes or apartments to travelers looking for a place to stay. So you're actually using something that exists instead of building another house or another apartment complex or whatever. Get on the app and say, hey, I see you've got a house available or an apartment and I want it. It's in an area I need and, you know, let's save the environment and give me your house for a day and I'll pay you for it. So anyway, sharing these use spaces the hosts earn extra money. We save a bit of expense for the traveler. They're supposed to be affordable, but I'm sure some of us have been in Airbnbs that were like dumpster fires, crap stains on the beds and stuff. But anyway, those are the, you know, you, you, you pay for what you get. It's the same as the concept of motels and hotels with their star rating. They also get rated, obviously. Anyway, I, I digress. So collaborative networks can also be used in research and development where Let's say experts from different disciplines, they can come together and collaborate on a project. So you're actually using brain resources, you know, something we've been doing for centuries, really. But now we've managed to, uh, quote unquote, growth hack it. This approach helps to the development of innovative solutions. You don't have to rely on just one location to start and innovate. You can now innovate online, you can innovate or you can come up with solutions together with someone, let's say, between people in the States and I don't know, Siberia. So how, how we can use collaborative networks in supply chain is you form a collaborative distribution network where, let's say, companies can pool their logistics resources, like their warehouses, let's say, or their trucks. Um, and by doing so, they optimize transportation efficiency. They can improve their delivery times. And in the end, the goal is to lead to more sustainable transportation practices, like re reducing the number of empty trucks on the road. A real life example of these types of distribution networks is for, is the, let me think, there's a partnership I'm thinking of. Oh yes, Walmart and Coca-Cola. They, was it well, Coca-Cola? I think it was. Was it Lay's, Pepsi? Anyway, whatever. It's, there's Walmart and Coca-Cola. Let's just say, actually, hang on, let me just check this quick. Okay, yep, it is. It's Walmart and Coca-Cola. They created a joint distribution center and the companies basically share the same warehouse and therefore the same distribution network, the same trucks, the same software. Uh, they've integrated quite nicely. And by the way, integration is another one of our resource sharing and collaborative network is when you, when two companies merge or one company acquires another and they typically work on more than one software, it is actually uh, great to integrate the two and share their ERP systems. It would definitely save cost and time uh, and paperwork. So both companies are winning. The consumer is getting their products quicker. They don't have to jump through too many hoops. So the consumer wins, the business wins, and to an extent, the environment wins as well. To an extent. I say that because if you end up having millions of these collaborative companies, then you're not solving the problem of having too many deliveries and things. But anyway, that's one way to look at it. But anyway, that's the supply chain side of it. Reach out if you need us to uh, look into some of your current distribution system and some of your current processes and maybe, just maybe, we can help you save a bit of money, make a bit of money, save a bit of the environment. Well, we can't make you make an environment, but yeah. All right, thanks for listening.